isang mga kalikasang araw mga mag-aaral. I am Mr. Lorenzo Dungo and I will discuss the Republic Act 9512 for the National Environmental Awareness and Education Act. For this lesson, our learning objectives are the following. First, explain RA 9512 or the National Environmental Awareness and Education Act. Second, cite an environmental conservation organization and their role towards the conservation and protection of our environment. And third, create a mind map about the law and the government agencies tasked to implement it. As we progress as a country, we must recognize nature's importance in our lives. Thus, it is our bold duty to conserve it, which in turn will protect us and provide for us. And the first step to realize this is to have the awareness and to educate ourselves about the environment. In the Philippines, the Republic Act 9512 was passed. So, what is this law all about? Let's find out. In the year 2008, RA 9512 was enacted into a law, which was signed during the term of former President Gloria Arroyo. And the following are the declaration of the policy of the state. The state recognizes the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology in accord with the rhythm and harmony of nature. Next, the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building. And next, the state recognizes the role of education to foster patriotism and nationalism, accelerate social progress, and promote total human liberation and development. And the state shall promote this or the national awareness on the role of natural resources in economic growth and the importance of environmental conservation and ecological balance towards sustained national development. Among of the government agencies that are involved in the implementation and observation of RA 9512, or the National Environmental Awareness and Education Act, we have here first the Department of Education, next the Commission on Higher Education, third we have the Technical Skills Development Authority, Fourth, we have the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Of course, we have the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Next is Department of Science and Technology and other relevant agencies. But what are their roles and involvement? So for the Department of Education or DepEd, the K-12 Basic Education Curriculum Program envisions the development of scientifically, technologically, and environmentally literate and productive members of the society who are critical problem solvers, responsible stewards of nature, innovative and creative citizens, informed decision makers, and effective communicators. Next, the CHED or the Commission on Higher Education and the TESDA or Technical Skills Development Authority shall include environmental education and awareness programs and activities in the National Service Training Program or the NSTP as part of the Civic Welfare Training Service component or the CWTS that is required for all baccalaureate degree courses and vocational courses with a curriculum of at least two years. The DENR shall have the primary responsibility of periodically informing all agencies concerned on current environmental updates, including identifying priority environmental education issues for national action and providing strategic advice on the environmental education activities. Next, we have the DOST, which is mandated to create programs that will ensure students to receive science-based quality information on environmental issues to encourage the development of environment-friendly solutions, devices, equipment, and facilities. Meanwhile, together the DepEd, CHED, TESDA, DENR, and DOST, and of course other relevant agencies, in consultation with experts on the environment and the academe, shall lead in the implementation of public education and awareness programs on environmental protection and conservation through collaborative interagency and multi-sectoral effort at all levels. Next, we have the DepEd, CHED, TESDA, DENR, DOST, DSWD, and all barangay units 
to ensure that the information is disseminated to the subject students. This is again a multi-sectoral approach where the government agencies work together to reach more Filipinos and the students in their mandate for the environment. Now, who should be taught about the environment? Where should environmental education be taught and practiced? To answer your question, the law or the RA9512 states that environmental education must be integrated in all curricula or curriculum at all levels. This includes barangay, daycare, preschool, non-formal, technical vocational, professional level, indigenous learning and out-of-school youth courses or programs, whether public or private. And here we have the scope of environmental education. The first is the environmental concepts and principles. Next, we have environmental laws. Third, we have the state of the local and international environment. Fourth, we have local environmental best practices. Fifth, we have the environmental degradation threats to humans. Next, we have citizens' role towards the environment and natural resources. And lastly, environment in the context of sustainable development. The law also said it shall cover both theoretical and practical mod models comprising activities, projects, programs, including but not limited to tree planting, waste minimization and segregation, recycling and composting, freshwater and marine conservation, forest conservation, relevant livelihood opportunities and economic benefits and others, such programs and undertakings to aid the implementation of the different environmental protection law. And here we have some examples of environmental organizations in the Philippines that are working for the conservation and protection of our environment, including Earth's natural resources, and especially its biological diversity or biodiversity. First, we have the WWF, or the World Wide Fund for Nature, which is a non government organization founded in 1961 that works in the field of wilderness preservation and the reduction of human impact on the environment. Their mission, to stop the degradation of Earth's natural environment and to build a future in which humans live in harmony with nature. We also have here Oceana, which is a non-profit ocean conservation organization focused on influencing specific policy decisions on the national level to preserve and restore the world's oceans. Both of these organizations have their offices here in the Philippines. Next, we also have the Climate Reality Project Philippines. They are a nonprofit organization that spreads the reality of the climate crisis our world faces. Also, Greenpeace, which has a branch here in the Philippines as well, is a non-government global organization campaigning on pressing environment issues concerning our climate, oceans, plastic, food, energy, livable cities, as well as social justice. These are just few examples of what they do on the ground to spread awareness and, of course, action. Next, we have the Green Education Philippines, which is the youth arm of the DENR in its mandate for environmental education. They aspire to empower the Filipino youth through environmental education and green networking. The other one is Laksambuy Initiative PH, which is an online youth-led advocacy focused on biodiversity conservation and education through using the Filipino language to spread awareness for biodiversity. Those are just examples and now that you students know all about RA9512 and some of the environmental conservation organizations, the question is, what can you do to help? And in this time of the pandemic, we are all limited to the space of our houses, but it should not end there. It should not end our care and action for environment. Now we will discuss about the seven R's of sustainability, which all of us can practice at the comfort of our homes. Probably, you are all aware of what the three R's, which is the reduce, reuse, and recycle. But little did we know that there is such a practice or lifestyle called the seven R's of sustainability, which primarily deals with better green and environmental loving practices in our daily lives. Let's talk about each of it. The first is rethink. Our choices are driven by our needs and wants, but, but as responsible citizens that care for the environment, we must first rethink 
if what we are going to buy or do is going to harm or benefit our environment. We remember that when we harm the environment, we are also doing ourselves harm directly or indirectly. Let's take for example our excessive use of plastics, which cause pollution that leads to flooding in our streets and even harming marine animals. The next one would be to refuse. What we don't need, we should refuse. It is being aware that you are not going to need something more than once, such as single-use plastics tech disposable bottles. And there is a saying that goes, if you can't reuse, refuse. The next is we reduce. When we reduce our wants and focus only on what we need, it benefits our environment as we produce less waste and reduce our carbon footprint by simply walking or riding a bike rather than using a car. One good example to reduce is to donate some of our used but still good stuff like clothes to people in need. The next one is to repurpose. As we all know, it can get to the point that we cannot really avoid 100% of the plastics like containers, foods, and beverages. The, th the thing here is that we should be mindful when we finish using the product. The question here is, where will it end? And to simply answer that, it goes to the landfills that are really polluted with trash, but it doesn't stop there. We have seen pictures of our waste ending up in the oceans, and we must put an end to this. To repurpose things is to give it a new life. A drinking bottle of water can be made into a pencil case, a lantern, or a pot, or a plant. We just have to be conscious and creative. The next one is to reuse. Now, a lot of us think that we reuse when we have many reuse, reusable, such as eco bags, reusable tumblers, reusable food containers. But the question is, are we reusing them enough? Or has it become a collectible? We choose to reuse by actually reusing it, or the reusables and having just what we need. The next is to recycle, which is one of the three R's we all know. To recycle is not just to throw our trash in the proper trash bins and just let someone do the recycling for us. To recycle means to not let the product or item just finish their life cycle because plastics in particular break down forever and it stays for centuries and cannot be naturally degraded. One good example of recycling is upcycling, which is to upgrade the product by innovating from it. The last one is rot. Rot can mean pagkabulok in Tagalog. So basically, it is to allow our domestic waste, such as food waste, to rot by doing practices, such as composting, which can be done in our homes. Composting helps plants grow through the help of organic matter in the compost that gives natural nutrients to the soil and the plants. Now that we've discussed seven R's, let us talk about environmental celebrations. As we aim to build the momentum and amplify the awareness for people to know the cause of protecting our environment, these celebrations are considered one good way to bring forward certain eco-celebrations. These include celebrations that last for a day, a week, a month, or even a year or a decade, as declared by the law and can also be declared by the United Nations. Here in the Philippines, let's take a look at some of the celebrations that we observe for environment that builds awareness for our nature. As part of RA 9512, or the National Environmental Awareness and Education Act, the law also declared the month of November as the National Environmental Awareness Month, which shall be celebrated and pursued throughout the Philippines. Next, we have the Earth Day, or also known as the International Day for Mother Earth which is celebrated annually every 22nd of April. This event is a great day to highlight our actions for the conservation and protection of the environment. The next one is Earth Hour, which is celebrated every last Saturday of the month of March, which is a worldwide movement organized by the WWF. This event is held annually to encourage individuals, communities, and businesses to turn off non-essential electric lights for one hour from 8.30 to 9.30 p.m on a specific day towards the end of March as a symbol of commitment to the planet. Next, we have the International Day for Biodiversity. The United Nations has proclaimed May 2022 the International Day for Biological Diversity to increase understanding and awareness of biodiversity issues. And also, the whole month of January is also known as the Zero Waste Month as mandated by Presidential Proclamation 760 
In year 2014, Zero Waste is defined as an advocacy that promotes the designing and managing of products and processes to avoid and eliminate toxic waste and materials. Celebrated every 3rd of March, annually, the World Wildlife Day is observed to celebrate and raise awareness of the world's wild fauna and flora. You should all know, Philippines is a biodiversity-rich country, making it one of the only 17 megadiverse countries in the whole world. And we are blessed to have endemic species such as the Philippine eagle, tamarau, the Philippine pangolin, and many more. That is all for this topic. I hope you learned many things from this discussion.